that's called in the glory land. Good morning. Welcome from Nashville, Tennessee. So happy you're joining us. I have Marty with me today, and uh, you're saying, well, where's Larry? He's here, but we had a change of quick plans here, so we're going to just have a good time. Hi, Marty. How are you doing? Hello. I am doing good. It just feels so amazing to have the sun shining. I oh, saw, yes. um, I was going to grab a picture, and I didn't get there, but um, I have my first little, um, they're the little violas um, that- oh kind of came up through the soil, you know, like we have uh, tulips and, you know, daffodils and those type of things. But uh, these little violas actually were the first ones to kind of peek up. Oh, and it was like, oh, that's fun. That's flowers. funny. Yes, yeah, spring, new life. I love it. I love it. It's so good to have you all join us today. And, and uh, we had a special guest that was going to be with us. And just before, maybe a couple hours before now, we got a phone call that uh, his mother had a stroke, they had presumed. And so they were just calling an ambulance. And, and so we just changed gears, but that's okay because, you know, we're here for a purpose. And I know that you're tuning in for a purpose. So we just pray God's best and his will for us today. So Marty, I'm gonna just, you know what I wanna do? I wanna just kind of talk from the heart today. And uh, you know, as well as I know, we've been through a lot of things. We're going to go through a lot of things. Like I tell my kids, they'll say, Mom, why is, I don't know if I can go through this. I don't know if I can make it. And I say, oh, yes, you can. And I've said this to you over and over. I told you this. I always answer. And, they, and I'll say, you have to make it through. So you will go through it. But the good news is, Marty, right, is that we go through it and we don't stay in it. So that's encouraging. And so today I just want to share a little bit and because um, I just feel like there's a lot of you here that are watching today. I know from what we've been going through the last week, it's like, God, where are you? Where are you at? Do you care? Do you see me? Do you hear my prayers? Do you know what's been going on? Do you know the anxiousness that I felt? Do you know the sleepless nights? Do you know the pain and the agony in my body? And we all go through some of that in our life and we're saying, God, where are you? I just want to encourage you today that Jesus has been there. He's walked before you. He is there and he's going to be there for you. My phone has been ringing off the hook. My emails, my text messages, my letters have been just almost overwhelming the last while with so many things people that are so hurting, going through so many tests and trials. And I want to read you a scripture here. In, uh, in 1 Peter chapter 4, in verse 12, it says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to, unto you. But rejoice inasmuch... Now, when I, I don't like rejoicing in pain. So when I read that, I say, Lord... You know, that's not my favorite word, but you said it in your word. But rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. <laughs> and when I see that, I say, yes, I can't wait till it's over. It's kind of, it's kind of like a dental appointment. Larry and I have often talked about that through the years. Uh, I, I know I shared this years ago. But my mom, you know, there are 10 of us kids. And so every year after Christmas, about February, my mom will make this phone call and I'd hear on the phone, uh, okay, yes, doctor, uh, I want to make appointments, dental appointments for my children, for, you know, about six of them. They say, you know, for Jack, Larry, Glenn, Clint, Wes, Jerry, Dale, Bill, and Gloria. And, and so she would get the appointments and then she'd get, write them all on, on these little cards and then she would pin it to the back of her kitchen curtain that looked out over our front lawn. And every time I would come in to get a drink of water, I would see this little note and my, and, and probably would say like June 8th, 10 a.m., Gloria Jean Brooks. That was my maiden name, Brooks. And I was just like, oh, no. And I so dreaded it. I was so fearful of the dentist. 
that I, I mean, it was really terrible. And so finally I got smart. It takes me a long time to get smart or smarter. But then I looked at that card one day and it was, I was getting older. I thought, now why am I allowing that little piece of paper with that date on it to give me fear? And, and, and just God spoke to my heart and says, Gloria, look beyond that. If it's at 10 o'clock or 1030 in the morning, look forward to 1130. It's all over. And it's taught me through life that even with the trials that we go through, that, you know what, we have to go through them. That's, that's the truth. So we're, it's how we go through them. And so I just have to realize, I just look beyond and say, Lord, I know you're going to bring me through this. And if you're watching today and you're hurting, you know, here's another verse just across the page of my Bible. This is 1 Peter 5. And is verses seven and eight. And you're all familiar with this. It says, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. It says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. We have to understand that the day we're living in, we're going to have trials. We are going to have testings. We are going to have things to face that, that we didn't think we was going to have to face. Uh, at least I, I feel that way. I mean, I feel like we've been going through stuff that I never thought we would ever face. But God has been faithful. You know, and he's promised. He said, I will go with you through the valleys. You know, he's going to protect us. He's going to guide us. But I have to let go of my fear and allow it to be turned into faith. So he can work because he can't work through my fear because it, it, it like it shuts the door. It blocks it. And here in, in over in first Peter, I want to give you a lot of scripture today. I feel like some of you need that. It's with verse six is wherein he greatly rejoice though now for a season. It's not going to last forever. Although when you get into a trial, it appears like it is never going to end. And when you go into it, you just feel like you're not going to make it. You know, uh, the letters and just in the last couple of days, the reports that I've received in have been just heartbreaking. The one I just got before this before this started was a, a dear cousin of mine and she had a stroke about a month ago and, and now she had another stroke. And I just just before I went on here, uh, her son called me and said um, that they they said it was a stroke. They said that she stopped breathing and they had to bring her back. And so you know, we prayed together. But you know, uh, our, my, our one of my one of my daughters has a friend who she has driven for. She's a wonderful Christian girl, but went into horrible deep deep depression and just a precious gal. And she just you know just didn't want to go on. She just couldn't make it. And it's really sad when you get these notes and you get these you get the news of people. I had two or three this week that tried to take their lives. And I say, God, please, oh, Holy Spirit, please be with them. Give them a purpose. You know, the devil will come. He will try to discourage you. That's, that's what he does. That's what, that's what his, that's his main deal. And discouragement, I looked up the word. And if the, in, in discouragement is, is the meaning of it is robbed of your courage. And if the devil can take your courage away, if he can discourage you, he's got you. I'm smart enough as a Norwegian, thank you, that I am not going to allow him to take me down. Now, I've been up to the wall. Uh, this week has been uh, overwhelming. The attacks on the family, the attacks on finances, the attacks on health. Uh, our friends, our relatives, our partners. Uh, there's a couple little. There's a couple families that have little toddlers that have cancer. They're battling with just toddlers. Then there are those with teenagers that are prodigals. We have those that, that have had a uh, cardiac arrest. We have a pastor whose son in in Arizona that we've had. We uh, we've been in his church many times. A lot of church. And his son was in a motorcycle accident here about two weeks ago. And he is in, they've had to bring him back. He had a cardiac arrest. And he was on a motorcycle, was hit, slid down the highway. And I was talking to his father-in-law yesterday again. And he said, it, they just don't know. You know, it's just a miracle he's alive. But it's just months and months of rehab that it'll take for him because he's just broke, bones broken. 
his he's been road burns and when he went off the motorcycle he skidded way down so his whole body is just like raw meat and you know we just think of these people who with their struggling with their mates with alzheimer's those that uh that have been in car accidents and i mean these drive-by shootings there's just every day there's bad news but i do serve a god who can bring us through he didn't promise we wouldn't have hard days he didn't promise we wouldn't be discouraged but he did promise us that he would never leave us and that he would never forsake us. I found out that in my life, adversity at times introduces me to myself. Let me repeat that. I wrote that in my notes. Adversity introduces us to ourselves. When we go through that trial, we really find out what we're made out of. And, you know, when things are going good, it's no problem. Wow, it's easy to face, it's easy to make decisions. But when you're sick, or you lost a loved one, or your home is being broken up, you know, your child is away from God, one is in, in the ICU in the, in the hospital. When you're at that spot, you find out where your faith is and how strong you are. But if you allow it, you know, I, here's something else I had written down. When you go through a trial, you have three choices. You can be like campers. You can be like, there are all kinds of campers. There's the quitters. There's the who start, like I saw on, on 60 minutes of the night, somebody who was going up to the top of this mountain. And I'm thinking, why would anybody want to crawl up, scale a mountain when they said there's like a dozen of them who have fallen and died in the past, you know, couple years? Why would anybody want to do that? But there are people who are go up just so far in whatever in life and they quit. They just say, too tough, not going to do it. And then you have the campers who just, they don't grow through their adversity. They don't grow through their trials. So you have a choice to make. You can go through it, or you can groan through it, or you can growl through it. I've been in all three of those little locations, and I've had to come to that point and say, Gloria, step away, because I want to be a climber. I don't want to be the quitter. I don't want to be the camper. I want to be the climber. I was thinking back about Katrina, when they, Katrina, and when the people, when the floodwaters were coming up and they were on their main floors, then they went up to second floor. Well, then they got to the second floor and the water was coming up. What did they do? Some of them literally uh, bust through the, the attic and they got up and stood on the roof. And you notice people in floods, when they're caught in, a, in a, you know these quick flood deals, and when they come so quickly, and we've been in that just once, and once was enough and God was with us. But these people, they crawl and get out of the car, they crawl on top of the car, and if there's a tree nearby where the car is, floored into the grab onto a tree, they'll keep climbing. Why? Because they're going to safety. And for us going through a trial, it's sometimes, sometimes it feels like it's a Katrina. We, we don't know, we realize the water's getting deeper, the problems, the trials, the hurts, the pain, the disappointment, the loss of job, the loss of friends, loss of loved ones, all of this. And we, we have to determine in our mind, we're not gonna just sit there and drown but we got to do something about it. And, you know, each one of us in our lives, we're all going to face something. We're all going to face something. And, and the trials, uh, they really wean us from the world. <laughs> when you get into a trial that's so deep, you know, all you can think of, you can't think of anything else but that trial. And then it sidetracks you. And the Bible says, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. The devil will come and he will come and try to distract you and tell you God doesn't care about you. He doesn't love you. If he was a loving God, this wouldn't have happened. You wouldn't have lost your job. You would have this money to pay your mortgages. And my, oh my, I hear all of these every, almost every day. But you got to listen to God's voice. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you because he promises he will never allow us to go through any more than what we can endure. If I told you how many times I've been there and I say, okay, I'm here. God, where are you? Then I have to realize his word. He doesn't go back in his word. His word is true that he will walk through us through the valley. And in our, in our lives, um, second Corinthians 2 or 12 verse 9 it says my grace is sufficient for me 
for my strength is made perfect in weakness. I wish I could say that my strength becomes perfect, but it's not, but I become dependent because I realize he is the only one that has the answer. If you're here today with me on the, and you're listening to this and you're saying, listen, Gloria, I'm there this week, this past month, this past year. And I've heard this over and over said, people have said, this has been the hardest year of my life. It feels like I've been thrown in with alligators or a den of snakes. It feels like I've just been squeezed. The life has been squeezed. I'm, Don't give up. Don't give in because Jesus will bring you through. Will it be easy? Will it be without a few shed tears? From experience, probably not. But I will tell you this, that he can give you a peace that is beyond this world's understanding. But you got to shut out Satan's voice because he's going to keep coming to you and telling you God doesn't care about you and he doesn't love you. You're not going to make it. Give up. Take your own life. Run away. It doesn't work. Because you know what? For people who decide that they want to check out of this life, you know, that's just, that is, uh, that's just, a, it's an eternal um, decision that you make for just a temporary problem. Because your life belongs to God. He gave you life. You don't have that power to take your own life. He will see you through. And if you're thinking about, you feel like you can't go on, get help. Make that call to a church, to a dear friend. You don't have to walk that alone because God will be with you in that. We have to learn in the midst of every storm that we have to live in the light of his coming, that you know what? This isn't going to be forever, even though it seems like it is now. I, I had a, I want to share this with you. There are four things that Paul never forgot when he was going through his battle. Now, if you read about Paul, he never, he didn't have a sunny day, sunny sunshine days with puffy white clouds, most of it. His was, he had troubles, he had trials, he was shipwrecked, he was beaten, he was, he was thrown in jail. He had everything that had happened to him. The four things that he never forgot going through trial, and I want to share them with you because I'm speaking to myself. I'm talking to Gloria Lundstrom. Number one, he never forgot his conversion. I take that really personally. And when I come into a valley, when I come into a trial, like we've been going through lately, and, and you know, it just breaks my heart because I think, God, you know, where are you? But then I go back and I remember and I picture myself kneeling at that altar as an eight-year-old giving my heart to Christ. And I, and I just, and I go back and I say, God, I knelt at that altar. I picture myself there giving myself to you. And you have kept me all these years. You're not going to forsake me now. Every day when Larry and I pray, and I have for years and years, and you've heard me say this before, but when I get into this, get into a discouragement, or the first thing every morning in prayer time, we thank God for the moment of our conversion when he came into our lives, because that really helps us when we get into Valley now, I look back and say, you've been faithful all that time, and I thank you for that. Number two, Paul never forgot he was in a spiritual battle. You know, we got to be smart. The devil is like a roaring lion, and he's trying to seek out those in the void by voices, by other people, by circumstances, world news, politics, and all of this. But Paul never forgot he was in a spiritual battle. And we are living in the day and today that that which can be shaken, talking about in Hebrews, that that can be shaken will be shaken. The families are be shaken. The families are, are making phone calls to me. Gloria, our family is under attack. The devil is dividing our family. They won't even talk to each other. They're condemning each other. They're just, she said, it just, they say, they just breaks our heart. We never raised them this way. But you have to understand you're in a spiritual battle and you have to stay in the word of God and you've got to keep your prayer life up. You've got to keep connected to God because he is your only answer. He said, I am that I am that I am. That is all inclusive. That means he is everything you need for every need. Does it mean we're going to get every prayer answer how we want it? No. I wish I could say yes, but no, it's not going to be. Some of us are going to suffer things that we, 
We're not going to see it on this earth. But you know what? When we see Jesus, thank God, it, all the tears are going to be wiped away. And that past will be forgotten because God wouldn't allow that in heaven for us to go through all of that to remember that. Number three, Paul never forgot that God's grace is sufficient. Again, like I said, he's promised he will never allow us to go any further than what we can endure. And sometimes our endurance seems pretty short. Sometimes it's really tough, but he's going to be there with you. Number four, he never forgot his joy strength ratio. The happier that we are, the healthier we are, and the stronger we are. And many times when we're going through a real battle, the best way to come out of it, I find just personally, is to reach out and to minister to somebody else. Maybe you, you would, every one of you watching, you will know somebody that is, that is a friend of yours, a relative of yours, and every one of you will know somebody that you could give them a call to encourage them. When you encourage others, you will encourage yourself. And the, you know, the thing about life, you know, like somebody once said, he said, life is tough. Life, you're not going to, not everybody's going to like you. And that's true. But you know what matters? It matters your relationship with God. That's what's going to bring you through whatever you're in. Um, <laughs> one pastor said, he said, I was going through this terrible battle. And he said, I prayed, God, please just, just help me. And, and he said, he felt, he just said, uh, his friend looked at him and said, cheer up. It's going to get better in the by and by. The pastor said, I don't want it in the by and by. I want it in the now and now. Our patience are tried. We get short of patience. And the devil will bring different things into our life just to cause us to be anxious, cause us to be, you know, we, we begin to, we begin to wonder and we test God to see if we were thinking, does he really care about me? Can he really take care of this? Well, I'll tell you what, if you don't give it to God, you're fighting a real battle. My mother always said this deal, and I've shared this before. But she'd always say, Missy, when you have a problem and a trial that you're coming into and you don't know what to do, she says, Missy, you know what I do? And I said, what's that, Mom? She says, I go, here it is, God. She said, I just lift my hands up and I say, I can't handle it. I'm giving it to you. And that's just exactly what we have to do. I heard a great line a couple of nights ago. I heard this great line. My pastor was on a program. And he said, when you're really discouraged, he says, and you're needing a miracle, he says, don't pray for a miracle. And I thought, what do you mean? We all need a miracle. That's why we pray. We're looking for a miracle. He says, don't ask for a miracle. Ask for God to give you a memory. And then he hesitated. And I'm thinking, a memory? He said, ask God to give you a memory of God's faithfulness in the past. Go back and think of what you've gone through that you didn't think you'd make it through. And, and then realize and relive how God brought you through that event. Be it was the loss of a loved one, how he helped you with the grieving process, or whether you were in the hospital or a sickness or an injury or whatever it was. He says, don't pray for the miracle. Pray for the memory of God's faithfulness. That that's why you and I are here today, because he's been faithful. Listen, people looked at us through the years and said, oh, it's nice for you because you've never had any problems. You know, all you do, you just would go up on the stage and smile and look pretty. And I thought that was a nice compliment. The older I get, I can use a few of those. And is, they said, you know, so you don't know what problems are. But yeah, we did. We did. We were at the point of, you know, not money. Yeah, we didn't have the money. We didn't have, you know, there, we didn't have means for anything. And I had uh, had three miscarriages. I had uh, a couple nervous breakdowns. I ended up in the hospital. And the doctor said, if you have another nervous breakdown, you'll be no wife or mother, but you will be in a mental institution for your life. And I remember having a total breakdown being in a hospital over in Aberdeen, South Dakota. And I remember praying saying, God, why, why? God kept saying, keep your mind off people. Put your heart and your focus on me, and I can bring you through this. I learned I couldn't allow people to steal my joy, to steal my health. And and in, in our lives, you know, we faced, my husband faced a cancer. Uh, we had a precious little grandchild that was uh, killed in a car accident by a 
um, by a drunk driver, grief. I didn't even know what grief could be like. It was so terrible. But God has been healing. He's brought, he's brought us through these heart problems. He's bringing us through. He has, and he's going to continue to. And for you, he just wants you to take your cares, all of them, and say, here they are, God. I can't carry them. I'm going to give them to you. You've been faithful in the past. You, you remain faithful, and you will be faithful. Each one of us in our lives, you may have felt rejected, unloved, or mistreated, or mistrusted, because everyone goes through that. Maybe your life is falling apart. But you know, Jesus isn't falling apart. He is closer than the very breath in your mouth. He has been there when you've cried. He has seen and felt the tear stains on your pillow for your family, for your prodigals. It's, we haven't gotten to the last page yet. He is going to remain faithful, but you need to remain faithful to him. And I want to pray with you today. And this is just, I just want to share my heart because I want you to know that we care about you. We have prayer requests. We have about 400 every morning that we've prayed over for years. And as I go through those, and then when we get the victory reports, I say, Glory, thank you, Glory, Lord, for praying that you uh, helped us through this tough time in our life, that we knew you were praying for us. And, you know, we can't ask you first, but we can bring you to the Father. And we take those needs, and when we get through, we, we take all these prayer needs, and then we just pray, Father, we're laying them at the foot of the cross where your blood was shed, where you shed that blood for every sickness, every broken heart, every broken home, everyone who needs comfort, everyone who has been guilt-ridden. He wants to take your guilt away. You can never do anything so bad that God would turn you away. He loves you. He's always there waiting. So no matter what you're facing today, we want you to know we love you and we're praying for you. He's promised. Remember, he's promised he will never leave you nor forsake you. But if you give up on him, you've given up on everything. And that would be the greatest loss of your life. You keep holding on. He's going to see you through. I want to pray with you right now. If you'd bow your heads with me as I pray, and I'm going to pray that God will comfort you. He'll give you strength, that he'll give you hope. Hope is what you need. And Jesus gives hope. He's a hope giver. And that's what Larry and I are. We have not had perfect lives. We've not had the easy life that people say, well, must be nice. You've had no problems. No, we've been through a lot, but he's given us hope to keep going and he wants to give it to you also. So let's pray. Father in heaven, we come to you today and I thank you for everyone who's watching this program. I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you that you're never too busy to listen to us. And in Psalms, David would cry out to you and he said, if, we, if I cry out to you, you will hear my voice. You said that if we cry out to you, you will hear our voice and our prayers, our supplications, you will hear us and answer our prayers. And we bring you all these people with broken hearts and broken homes. Lord, where they've been discouraged, those who are depressed, those who feel like giving in, those who feel like giving up, those who feel like they want to just end their lives. And in Jesus' name, we bind that spirit of suicide. We bind that spirit right now. We bind the spirit of discouragement and despondency. The Lord, you will lift up those who need to be encouraged. In Jesus' name, you are the encourager. Lord, let them know, get into your word and to pray. Just cry out to you and then, Lord, give them joy. Give them peace. Lord, you are the peace giver and we thank you for it. We are so dependent on you. You are all we need. You are everything that we need to make it through this life. And we're going to thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you for praying with us. Thank you that we can be here for you and with you. And uh, we're going to be having another guest in our program, uh, the one who called in who had to um, reschedule. We'll be on hopefully next on our next Coffee and Connect. Marnie, I want you to come back on with us here. Thank you for always being faithful, Marnie, always being there. 
I am happy too. That was so, so good. And I think so incredibly timely. Um, it, it just does not take a rocket scientist to know that people are hurting. Um, just as you talked about, they felt like their courage has been robbed, right? Yes. Like it's just yes. been taken from them. I, I feel like there's a lot of people that are just walking weary. They're tired and, and, and the, the temptation to kind of give in to that um, just feels maybe heavier with every day as as our world just struggles with um, kind of how to live this life right now in the midst of um, hearing all of the tragedies, hearing all of the opinions, um, just, just hearing even uh, just all that different people are facing that feels so unfair. And, and so to be able to give people uh, just truly this, this offer of hope, uh, there was yes. a line that you said at the very end that just, it struck me. If you give up on him, you've given up on everything. And I loved your, your, just honest plea and call um, to everyone to not give up because God is yes. faithful to see us through. And I just yes. wanted to read, you You mentioned the scripture before, but I want to read the second part of it. Um, and it says, therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. Um, and it just says that that is why for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, <laughs> which is not my natural yes. normal. I was so like, normal. oh, hey, here's my weakness. I'm, I'm no. really excited about this weakness. <laughs> uh, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties, for when I am weak, then I am strong. strong. And it's not because of our own uh, efforts and our, our, our own doing, but it's because of Christ's power in us. Yes, and so thank yes. you for just bringing that reminder to us today. We are not lost. We are not forgotten. No, we are not, not wandering. Alone. God has not, you know, lost <laughs> us on his radar of where everybody is. <laughs> um, he sees us. And, and so thank you for um, really giving that message of hope. It, it's so needed. It, 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 it just was amazing. So thank you. Uh, by the end of today, we will have this marvelous message of encouragement uh, uploaded to www.larrylenstromministries.org. And uh, if you just click on the big Coffee and Connect banner on the front page, it will take you to all of the CC Live videos. This one will be the first one as it is the most recent. And uh, I know you have someone that needs to hear this message. So to be able to share it, just click in the top right-hand corner, the three little white dots. Um, it will open up the link and you can share it however you would like. Amen. Thank you for joining us. And my last words I want to tell you is remember that Jesus really cares about you. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you again. Bye-bye. Bye. Broken dreams to live is not always as easy as it seems, but God is so faithful, so very true, and He really cares about you. Don't doubt it. Deny it, look and see what God has done to prove that He loved us, He gave.
Let's go. 